Hello and welcome back to Heiser Media's coverage of the 23rd annual Great Eastern Amateur Cup here at Tyler State Park. This will be the back nine of the East Course. My name is Brett Hensley, and I'm joined here by Michael Grofsvik. Grofsvik, how's it going, Mike? How'd you like that first uh, front nine? Yeah, it's going well so far. We saw a bit of a mixed bag on the front nine. Started off a little rough for the guys, but the second half uh, definitely seemed to pick up the pace. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they go into the back nine here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can see the scores here from our four competitors on the card. Um, looking to uh, clean that up a little bit as we move into the back nine. And you can see the leaderboard uh, updates. Mike, uh, what, what would most impress you there, the front nine? What do you think? I think it was uh, probably Zach's bounce back, honestly, being the, the defending champion of the event. You know, definitely some pressure on him. Started with three straight bogeys, but then played a really, really good uh, next six holes. Uh, so I, I think that's probably what I took away most from that. We'll see if he can keep that going on the back nine here. Yeah, let's start off with hole 10. It's a 296 foot par three. Um, slightly off to the right, you can see that the basket's uh, raised up into this new position, uh, very elevated. Um, uh, just a tough, uh, tough putt if you're not close. So these competitors are going to be looking to get as close as they can to the basket here. It's like Anthony lining up a really nice forehand shot that will put him like maybe just inside the circle on that elevated basket. Yeah, as I kind of noted on the front nine uh, towards the end there, the, the forehand has really been treating Anthony well so far today. Yeah, good pickup. It's like John's going to kind of go down the middle uh, with a backhand. It's usually the kind of the play you see for the A-pin, as you can see it right there in the uh, background. So he's going to come up pretty left, probably a layup putt from there. And then this is a great lefty hole for Zach. I'd expect him to get pretty close. And look at that. Yeah, he bounces kind of... Uh, just inside the circle, but again, a tough putt. Yeah, you can't really do it too much better than that, though, off the tee. And here's another forehand here by Evan. He's going to get some good ground play, and it, I think he bounced up to right right where uh, Anthony was, kind of following his uh, jet trails there. Yeah, I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but he put that on a real steep hyzer uh, off, off the tee. I don't know if he was maybe trying to make the gaps a little bit bigger by thinning out the disc but seemed to work out okay unfortunately he does miss the putt to cash in on the birdie yeah good bid for birdie just a little bit higher Let's see if anthony can make the correction yeah, the basket's definitely up there a ways This might be the most elevated basket now at Tyler. And great putt there by Anthony getting on the board again with another birdie. I think that's back to back now on nine and 10. Looked like he was a little bit right side on that putt. It was a really nice catch for him by the basket there. Let's see, we still haven't gotten to Zach. So John will look here to clean up his par. Good bid, just a little high. Yeah, it's a tough one because he definitely didn't put his up shot where he wanted to put it. It left himself a little bit too much to do on the par putt. And Zach will take down another birdie. Good start to the uh, to the back nine for uh, our competitors here with the. Uh, three birdies and then unfortunately John will or sorry uh, two birdies and a par and John will unfortunately have to tap in for bogey don't think the competitors will be too sad to see the back of that basket <laughs> no, without a doubt so this is hole 11 it's a par 4 574 feet um, again, you'll notice a theme here, just a big gap shot off the tee. Um, kind of want to place it again, maybe about 250 feet down. Uh, leave yourself with uh, an upshot, a manageable upshot that's uh, it's pretty guarded, the green. So the players are really going to try to bite off as much as they can. Um, but you really need maybe only about 250 to 300 feet of distance for your upshot. Uh, it looks like Anthony caught something a little early, but he's still on the fairway. I think you get a nice little kick back into the 
into the fairway there off that tree. I think he just barely nicked it, and that kept his disc moving. And Zach caught the opposite luck there. He was just a little bit of high, caught a branch, and kicked right. Uh, Evan pulled that. He's not going to be happy with that one. That one is going to kick off to the right. Yeah, it's definitely the one you don't want, is to hit that early guy and then bounce off to the side. You want to get either distance or accuracy, and unfortunately that was neither. Yeah, that one was a little pulled, but I think it at least made it through kind of that initial gap. See, Evan will have to scramble. It's kind of like no OB over here, but just kind of plays as nat some natural OB. <laughs> But a good yeah. scramble shot there from Evan to get back out on the fairway. Yeah, at that point, he'd have to do something pretty special to save his par, so we'll see if he can do it. But yeah. it's definitely mm -hmm. going to be tough to do. And John, unfortunately, released it too low and just kind of threw it into the ground there. Yeah, pretty much an unforced error on that one. Had a pretty open look and just kind of grounded it. It's like Zach bit off quite a few feet there of distance. He should have it up and down there. Hopefully to save this par. And Anthony's in an okay spot, but not really to attack for birdie. Uh, unfortunately, he connects with one of the down trees. There's a good shot there by John just to get back into position. We'll have a look to save his par at least. Evan's playing to the right of the big tree. And he kicked back out to the fairway, but that's going to be another long putt to save par. Zach with great effort there on the upshot. He should be able to save his par. Zach's approach game has definitely been helping him a lot today. He's given himself some very, very manageable putts. Absolutely. Yeah, he hasn't been too sharp off the tee, but uh, he's connected on some great upshots and some good putts today to keep himself in it. Tell Evan wanted wanted to run that one just a little bit low. John comes up a little short, so we'll have a couple bogeys there on the card if Evan can clean this one up. It's a couple times today, too, that John's putt looked like it just kind of dropped out of the sky. I think he's got a bit of a nose-down style that, from distance, just kind of makes the putt die out a little bit too quickly. Yeah, good call on that. I've noticed that on a few putts as well. So it looks like Anthony and Zach will be able to save their pars, though. John really didn't play the hole too poorly. It was just that first shot that put him in a real bad spot. And then after that, he played it well, but it was just too much to do to save the par. Yeah, absolutely. Hole 12 now. It's a 338 par 3, one of the longer uh, par 3s we have in this layout. Um, you could see you want to kind of play something backhand, backhand right hand, uh, hyzer, get your disc moving really far left to try to get as close as you can to get to this elevated basket. Again, another tough putt. Uh, so you kind of want to make sure you kind of get your disc as close as you can because uh, there is some OB behind the basket. Looks like Anthony pulled off a good straight shot. Um, you probably wanted to go a little bit more left than that for an easier up and down. Looks like Zach's going lefty turnover. And he got his disc going left, but he didn't bite off a lot of distance. So he's going to have a tricky upshot there with lots of trees in the way on the left side. Yeah, I was wondering how he's going to play this hole as a lefty. It looked like he kind of took the, the local route. Yeah, there is that left side gap as we see Evan taking it as well. Um, and it looks like he got to about kind of the same spot Zach did. This looks good if he can get some ground play. Uh, this just kind of may have connected one of the little trees or just hit something on the ground and died. Up with a tricky upshot. It's like he got down into the into the gully there, but it's going to be a tough putt up at that basket. Oh. Hit that 
Three. Okay. Same thing with Evan, and there is OB Road back there, uh, but I think he stayed safe. You see Anthony off in the distance there with his touchy little forehand. Yeah, unfortunately connected with one of the little trees there. Another long putt. And that's going to kind of showcase the difference on this basket is John's down in that gully, like you said, but he's kind of putting the direction you want to be putting because you're putting away from the gully. Anthony's going to be putting down towards it, so it'll and be that, interesting to see what he does with that. Yeah, and that's just a mistake there from Zach trying to jump putt over the log pile. Didn't get it high enough. But it doesn't matter. What a putt by Zach to save his par there. That was huge. That is the confidence of a returning champion because to run that putt at the elevated basket with the big ditch behind it, that yeah, if that misses, high. that's going to be a big problem for him. And a great putt there by Anthony as well. We got two big putts. You definitely love to see guys running putts like that because it definitely makes it interesting to watch. Evan kind of caught a break there because he landed on the other side where it's, you know, you're not putting up at it like John has to, but unfortunately he couldn't connect with the putt. Let's see if John can get it. This is a little low again. Bit of a commentator's curse there. The two guys that had the, the putt that I was talking about is the direction you don't want to be. Both made it and the other two didn't. So <laughs> Absolutely. that one's on me, I think. <laughs> My bad, guys. I don't know if you can jinx something in the past, but. <laughs> All right, so let's just check in on our leaderboard through hole 12. Uh, any observations here, Mike? It's tight. It's going to be tight all day, it looks like. I mean, it's a tough course. Like you said, guys are struggling for pars, so there's not going to be a whole lot of breathing room, I don't think. Absolutely. If you can get anywhere near even par, you take that all day. So we've got hole 13, one of the more iconic holes, I think, at Tyler, a par 5, 711 feet. Again, it's a golf shot. You know, you're, you're trying to make golf shots here. Um, just get on the fairway. Uh, give yourself a chance uh, of getting that four. Um, so you kind of want to throw something through this left gap here, whether on forehand or turnover right-hand backhand. It looks like Anthony's going to throw the forehand. And I think he went maybe a little too straight into the rough. You kind of have to make sure it fades out a little early right so you can get on the fairway. Yeah, I think he wanted that a little flatter out of his hand, and he just put on a little too much ante, and that carried it over into the rough. Didn't really have the stability to fight out of it. Yeah, and Zach threw the lefty backhand there. It's This hole sets up really nice for a lefty or a forehand. Um, he's on the right side of the fairway. He should have some options over there. Um, but it will be a little bit tight. And then Evan manages to go over really close to Zach's disc, but he's more on the fairway, so that should open up a few more options for him compared to Zach. It looks like John's going to test the right side out. It looks like he got through really far. Look at that. Wow, what a shot. That's way down there. You'll take that every time on this hole. Absolutely. It is not hard to, or it is, it is very difficult to, uh, to get down that right side clean, but he pulled it off. Looks like Anthony's just kind of chipping out there to get back out on the fairway. Uh, Evan will have a pretty straight shot here to get past that big tree if he can. Looks like he pulled it off to the right a little bit. Uh, I think he's knocked down right at that big tree. It's going to be tough to access the green from there. Zach's got a shot. little forehand. He got around the big tree. He should have an option then. Probably left lefty uh, backhand to access the green on a big hyzer. It's one of those where if you're standing on flat ground to throw your next shot, you're happy with it. Absolutely. We still haven't gotten to John's drive. Anthony throws a really nice up shot. I think he cleared that big tree. And here's John. Oh, and I think he just turned that over a little bit too much. It's a shame because he was in really good position. Zach's going for the green here. Get a little ground play skip. Okay, it looks like that'll putt. I don't know. I don't think he made the circle, but he should have a look for um, his, uh, I think, birdie. And then John just uh, kind of threw an overhand there that didn't really pan out towards the basket. So he'll just have to kind of pitch out. 
hopefully get up and down. Yeah, dude doesn't have much left here. It's a little shit. Oh, but he sawed it off a little bit. But it got through, and it's right at the basket. Definitely, I don't think that was his intended line, but take that when you can. Looks like Zach's going forehand. Oh, and he kind of made the same mistake down the right side. But it got through. All right, so both of those worked out. Yeah, you can see the right side's a lot tighter, but they, they managed to get through it. All right, Nevin didn't get as close as I thought, so he'll just have to kind of pitch up there, take his par. Looks like and John's going to be pitching out from the rough. Ooh. I think he tried to yeah. bite off a little more than he could chew on that one. Tried to get a little too fancy with it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We've all been there, though. Oh, good send there. You could tell he really wanted to hit that after the mistake. But it leaves him with a pretty long comebacker. That's a shame. That's what Tyler will do to you sometimes. Yeah, I think looking at the scores, he might have been trying to push it a little bit, really trying to make up strokes where he could. And unfortunately, when you start to play that type of game, it leaves you susceptible to, to bigger errors. Definitely. Good putts here from Zach and Anthony. Zach will be taking the birdie. And Evan will clean up there, I believe, for par. And unfortunately, John's going to take the double bogey. It's a tough one for John because he had the best drive of the group, but those short par fives will get you with those shots. Absolutely. So hole 14 or Trace Mandos is a, again, another two-shot par three, 403 feet. You have a uh, Mando on your left side right off of the tee pad. So you're looking to make sure you get your disc to the right of that Mando, but then going hard left here. So a lot of people are throwing putters on this hole, I think just because you don't want to push the disc too far and you really want to get it going left. And it looks like Zach executed that left. It's definitely not a left-handed friendly hole, but he threw a really good turnover forehand there. And Anthony looks to follow suit with a right-hand backhand. He pushed it a little long, but it rolled out nicely into the fairway. So he should be able to access the green from there. Evan's going backhand as well. I think he pulled that to the right a little bit. That fights out for him, but I think he got swallowed up by the right side rough. Yeah, he's had a few of those late releases today. I think the disc is just getting a little bit caught in the hand on him. And if you don't make that Mando, you go to a drop zone right next to the uh, to the tree. But it looks like everyone was able to make the Mando. A um, couple of shots pulled to the right there, including John's. So Zach's just probably trying to pitch out here because you have to hit another set of double mandos before you access the green. So if you're this far back, it's tough to run, but it looks like John's going to try to pull it off. I think that, yeah, too much hyzer, and it looked like he connect. Yeah, he connected with the mando tree and probably went beyond it to the left. He'll proceed to the drop zone, which is right by the trees. Uh, looks like Anthony pured the mando. Great shot and got the roll there over to the other side of the fence and in the circle. He actually went right through the, the opening in the fence. Great job. Yeah. Oh, and Zach uh, had a nice little easy upshot there. He went a little bit long, but uh, the way he's been putting, I'd put my money on him making that. Evan leaving himself with what should be a pretty easy approach here. Yeah, that was a really smart shot by Evan, just trying to get himself back into the fairway so he can easily get through those mando trees, and he executed perfectly. We'll see John here. He's got a putt from the drop zone. It's about 60 feet. Definitely giving that one a run. Yeah, there it is. Good putt again by Zach. He's got the hot putter going. Yeah, you but were right. Definitely don't bet against his putter right now. Yeah, he's like maybe he could be the only one in the field under par at the moment. Thank you. And a good birdie putt there too by Anthony. They both played this hole perfectly. Anthony and Evan, both with no red on the on their scorecards over the last nine. It's a pretty good way to play Yetter. 
or uh, Tyler, rather. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, the Great Eastern Am Cup, again, anything around even par, that's all you're trying to do. You know, usually even par uh, can take it down. So just kind of want to stay, try to play as boogie-free as you can. And which brings us to hole 15, which is a 460-foot par 4. Again, you'll the same theme here on the east side. You have a tunnel shot gap. Uh, you want to get your disc going a little bit to the right on this tee shot to land on the fairway. Um, there is an OB creek to the right, so you want to avoid that side. Oh, it looks like Zach's going to kind of push it over that way, and it does hit a tree, and he's probably safe. I, there's a there's a little bit of a river bank there that sometimes collects the disc, so he'll probably have to play out of there. It's like Anthony Tried to connected it. with an early tree, unfortunately. Looked like it was going to hit the gap, but he hit one of the trees on the left side there. Unfortunately, Evan just kind of throws that one into the ground. Pressure on John here to give us a good drive on this hole. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the holes where you really want to see a gap hit because it's impressive. Oh, oh, he almost got through the right side, but he had a pretty big kick to the right. It looks like he stayed safe, though. He was a few inches away from being where you want to be there. Just caught the edge of that last tree, it looked like. Great golf shot there by Evan just to get himself out on the fairway. The Anthony can attack the green from this far back. Gets pretty far down there. It kind of faded off a little early to the right, um, but he should be able to easily get up and down from there. Looks like Zach has to go overhand from the creek bed. I think he got back out on the fairway. John will pretty much be following suit there. Not quite overhand, but definitely up and out of the creek. Yeah. Evan still has some more work to do here. He's going high for all. Oh, unfortunately, caught a branch and got knocked down. That looked like it was going to be perfect. And Zach actually went too far. He's on the left side now. He's got to go up and over again. He's actually on the, the fairway to hole 16. Unfortunately, I don't. He made it further up, but I don't. I think he stayed in the rough. Yeah, Zach was playing a little bit of army golf there. I'm sure people have heard it called before. <laughs> left, right, left. There's a good shot there from Anthony just to get up and over. And a good shot there by John as well. And everyone's kind of uh, having to go up and over on this hole. Oh, nice little bid there from Evan, almost canning the par. But unfortunately, I think he's going to take a bogey. Zach gave it a bid from the creek bed. Oh, we see uh, this got swallowed up by a hole. It's not the kind of lie you want to see, ideally. No, it's not, right? So Anthony's going to have to figure out his footing here, how he wants to straddle. Is it okay? He's just checking in with his card mates to make sure he has a legal stance. Oh, good bid, just off the rim. Anthony's uh, hit a bit of metal today, unfortunately, on his putts. Looks like, uh, I, don't, I think we're having a bogey frame here. I don't think anyone's in position to take a par. Yeah, I think we uh, ran into another commentator's curse there. Talking about no no red on the scorecards in a while, and I think we're going to see some. Although John has the, okay. the one par, I John think. John was able to get the par. Stand corrected. Yeah, it just seemed like a struggle from everyone to get to this point. I think that's what Tyler looks like even on the, the holes you play well, though. It's always a struggle. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's like uh, a couple of teammates having fun there. So let's check in with the leaderboards through hole 15. We got three holes left to play. Uh, what do you want to say to round out the, the back nine here? 
Zach is starting to make his move. It's only a couple strokes, but the, the pack is starting to thin out a little bit behind him with a bit more of a drop to positions, kind of four, five, six. So we'll see if a few guys can separate themselves here. Yeah, certainly. So we're going to get to a couple of field holds here. We got hole 16. It's a 883-foot par 5. Uh, the C-pin is pushed way back um, into the woods there, but the initial tee shot, it's going to be this kind of wide open shot, but with OB on the left and right side. So you got to keep your disc out of the field, over the field, and then keep it from fading left into the other side of the woods. So you can see John there executed a really good tee shot, a good placement shot off the tee. Tough lefty shot here for Zach to stay in bounds. And it looks like he did perfectly. You could see that left side OB comes into play with the flags over there. It's definitely tough with the OB on the left-hand side. I mean, you have it on both sides, but with the righty backhand, you're kind of trying to hit a landing spot. You can't really see that well off the tee. And definitely makes it tough to have the OB there. Yeah, absolutely. You see Anthony got gave his enough height there, so it was able to fade back into the fairway. Well, no one's really trying to go big. It's kind of placement shots. Unfortunately, Evan, oh, what a roll. It looked like he was going to go right into the out of bounds, but he rolled out. I think he kind of benefited from how thick the OB is there because it kind of hit the thickness and pushed it right back out. Yeah, absolutely. It's a low shot from Evan. I know he's got a big arm. I'm kind of surprised to not see him go real big there. It's like John's trying to go back. Big flex turnover shot. It looks like it's safe, but he's going to be behind that really big tree. There's two ways to access this green. So Zach's playing the right side. There's also the left. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if anyone throws a shot on the left side of the fairway. But it's like Zach uh, pushed up quite a bit. He might have some rough to deal with, though. Let's see if Anthony's going to play this left side with the forehand. Now he's also looking to fade here back to the right side. Oh, and he just came up short of that central OB. You can see the markers right there. So uh, good placement there from Anthony. I think he probably pushed that a little closer than he would have liked to, but you're definitely going to be happy with the end result. Yeah, there's a good golf shot there by Evan. I think he's kind of resigned to play for par at this point. And then John gets some good ground play there. That'll push him forward. One of the few places on the course you actually can get some some reliable ground play. Yeah, right? Especially if they if the grass is freshly cut, like it looks like it is. Zach's going with a flex forehand. He got into some rough. I th he's safe, though. Oh, we'll see what he has for his up and down. Let's see if Anthony can get to the green from here. It's like a great shot. Couldn't tell I think he found it... the corner nicely there. Yeah. He did I, round it. I think so. We'll see what he's left with. Hopefully he has a putt. It's like Zach's punching through. Oh, he got caught up there a little early. So, unfortunately, that's going to be a long putt to save par. And John got a kick. It, it did advance forward, but still, I think that's outside the circle. And Zach found this rough, I think, in the center. Okay, so he's able to just pitch out high there. He should be able to make that putt, I think, to save his par. We've seen Zach in the in the rough in the woods quite a few times today, and with him on top of the leaderboard, it just really goes to show how well he's been putting. Yeah, for sure. There was a good bid there by Evan. This putt just kind of floated a little bit too high there. Oh, what a bid. That was, He had the nose down. It looked like it was going to crash into the chains, but again, it just a little bit sunk a little bit too fast. And it looks like Zach's going to be the only one to kind of card, the, card a par on this. He looks very confident in his putt. Not just that he's hitting them, but from many distance he's been at, real smooth stroke, and it, it looks like he it really knows it's going in right as he's letting it go. Yeah, for sure. That's good clean up there by Evan. Yeah. 
he did well on that whole 11 to turn the little bit of a lucky break he got of rolling back out of the OB into a par. You definitely want to take advantage of those little gifts the course gives you. Yeah, for sure. All right, so our cart will clean up their putts there, and we're gonna head over to hole 17, the second field hole before we finish in the woods. This is a 591 foot par four. You wanna throw, uh, you know, you can really bite off a lot of distance on your first shot. You kinda wanna land, out, land maybe close to that tree on your right. Then you have an option of going either the fairway side or the right side of B to access the green, which is pretty surrounded by trees. So your upshot has to kind of crash through the, um, the set of trees that are there. And we'll see Zach lead things off. He's gonna throw a nice distance drive out there. And I think he may have gone OB. If it's, it's not, it's close. right on the line. I didn't see anything. I didn't see a marker, so maybe he's safe. So it faded out a little bit too hard on him to the right side there. And it looks like Anthony's going to throw one out kind of in the middle, be really safe there. That'll give him an option if he wants to just play the fairway there. Uh, probably a forehand. I think that's probably Anthony's best option. Just in reference back to Zach's shot, for any newer viewers we do have, uh, in order to be in bounds, you just need any part of your disc at all touching in bounds. So even if it's a couple blades of grass, it counts. So it looked like where Zach was ending up there was going to be kind of right on that line. Oh, and Evan's pushing the OB line, but it looks like he's safe. So from here, it's, I don't think you're going to be able to access the green. So here's just a golf shop to the fairway. That should be easy to get up and down from there for John. Oh, it does look like Anthony's going to test the right side OB backhand. Looks like he executed it pretty well. He's got the height right. It looked like, oh, okay, he connected with an early branch. He's safe, but that's going to be probably an obstructed circle two putt, unfortunately. Good effort, though. Oh, come on. That looks early from yeah, Evan. Yeah, sawed off a little bit. And I, yeah, I don't know. That probably went, never came back in either. So he's going to be not advancing very far, I don't think. Yeah, we'll see if the other guys give him the benefit of the doubt there because it didn't look like he ever came back in bounds when he crossed that initial out-of-bounds spot. So be interesting to see. There's a fantastic upshot there by Zach. Looks like he's uh, well in the circle. And yeah, Evan unfortunately didn't advance. But really good recovery shot there. Yeah, you so definitely don't want to make back-to-back -back mistakes there, so it's definitely a good upshot from Evan to to kind of shrug off that OB mistake and kind of get yeah. right back into it. And unfortunately, John just kind of overturned that forehand effort, so he's going to have a long putt. It's Anthony's birdie bid. What a sh what a putt, Anthony! Awesome putt, deep circle two. That's got to feel really good there. Especially towards the end of the round, really, and to end it on a on a confident note, on a good note, really could carry over into round two for him. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see John was completely obstructed there. He just kind of lofted that up to try to hyzer it in. If I'm remembering correctly from checking out the hole scores as we go along here, I think this hole played the closest to par of any of the holes today. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. I believe it was the third easiest hole um, average, just just slightly over par. And we can see we got um, Zach with the lone birdie. Um, Evan's going to take that bogey, unfortunately, um, from going out of bounds. And that brings us to our final hole in the back nine here on the east side, hole 18. It is a par four, 320 feet. It's a very short par four, but you can see it's a... a really really tiny tunnel gap that you have to hit off the tee once you hit that tunnel gap you want to uh, throw something kind of on hyzer to access the uh, the c pin up there on the hillside on the left side so you can see zach strong throwing his forehand up the tunnel that's way up there uh, he should have 
a fairly routine up and down from there. That's a really good spot. And, and you can see Anthony, with the yep. trusty forehand. Yep, absolutely. You can see him take that. There's that um, left side gap that he was able to get through. There is a Mando tree over there. I believe it. Um, it's marked in yellow. Um, so you have to be careful if you do take that left side shot. And John trying to access the middle, kind of sawed it off a little. Hit a tree on the left side. Looks like Evan's going to go up the middle here. Good height. Really good hyzer angle. And that's just as good as Zach's. Um, not quite as far, but he'll uh, he'll have a fairly routine up and down, I think. Uh, very interesting. A very interesting approach there from John. Really kind of, I don't know if it was intentional, kind of ended up being a thrower. Yeah, I was going to say it looked like um, a creative approach. He didn't really have much from there. And unfortunately, Anthony there connects with the tree. Let's see what, if Evan and Zach can get up and down from these really good drives. Good height there from Zach. Looks like he got by the rock wall, I believe. Couldn't really see it finish. But he should be in the circle. Oh, and Zach, did he hit the pole? It sounded like he did. Wow, great upshot there. It didn't roll too far, and the way he's been putting, I probably going to call that a birdie. Yeah, I think it's a safe bet to place on him right now. Like I said, he's looked extremely confident on the putting green. For sure. Yeah, it looked like Anthony kind of caught something early on that upshot, so he's going to, looks like he's, yeah, he's going to have to work for this uh, par save. I could be wrong, but I think that was for birdie from Anthony. I think the next one will be for par, unless I missed one somewhere in there. We'll find out in a second, I guess. Good look there from Evan. Unfortunate. He must have hit that rock wall and rolled away. And Zach is going to card the loon birdie on the card. What a way to finish his round. You're right, Anthony, with the bogey. So I did. Yeah, it happened so fast. There. He had an unfortunate upshot, and John will collect his par. A yeah, bit of a I tough believe. back nine there for John. Yeah, for sure. A lot of color on the scorecard. All right, so there's our scores through the first 18 on Tyler East side. Reminder, this is a two-round tournament. We'll be going to the west side next. Um, and here's our leaderboard through those 18 holes. Um, anything that stands out to you, Mike? Yeah, like I said at the, at the break before, Zach kind of pulling away a little bit, giving himself a nice four-stroke lead, defending champion of the tournament. We'll see if he can stick with that going into round two here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to our sponsors, Elevation Discs, and I look forward to round two we're going to be seeing zach and anthony on the uh the lead card as well as two two new members uh ryan young and tony rogers so make sure to check out that second round on the west side and subscribe to heiser media we'll see you there